So if I ask you the question how you feel about your economic well-being, what would your answer be? Well, certainly a lot of research is done into this field and public opinion is divided on what is really reconciliation and how reconciled is South Africa 22 years into our democracy. This is The Money Makers. I'm Bruce Whitfield. Tonight I'm joined by Jan Hofmeyer. He's the head of the policy and analysis unit at the Institute for Justice and Reconciliation about the latest findings of the South Africa Reconciliation Bureau barometer being released this week and see if we can get any correlation between the financial pressure that everybody is feeling and racial polarization which is very very evident across the country right now. Jan Hofmeyer just explain to me how you do this kind of research please and how you get an adequate sample to get a realistic uh, picture of what's going on in the country. Good evening Bruce and good evening to your viewers. Uh, well, this survey we've been conducting since 2003 and basically we draw a nationally representative sample from across South Africa um, to, to make sure that it also reflects our population in terms of its racial composition, gender composition and then, then also the rural and urban divide. And then we ask them a number of questions that deal with reconciliation and in broader terms social cohesion. In other words, how do they respond to political and economic changes in the country and how they feel that that impacts also on processes of national reconciliation. You break it into lots of different categories, but my sense of it going through your documentation is that white South Africans are still 22 years into uh, democracy, quite removed from the economic realities of people that they might not deal with on a daily basis. Yes, well, we, we see that in the responses of most people in the different racial categories, that when we ask them about their general perception of their own financial, financial relation to the rest of the country, but also in other issues, that they usually use their own group as a reference point. So what one we very often sees is that, that the comparison is being made with the people immediately sort of around you. And, and one then also sees this also playing itself out in some of the findings that, that we report on. Now, do you get the sense that, that white South Africans are pretty much divorced from the reality of many black Indian and so-called colored uh, South Africans? I think if one, if one looks at the developmental statistics that's been put out by Statistics South Africa on a frequent basis and also other academic institutions, I, I think it is, it's an accurate view. Um, what one does see is that um, when, when one compares also the different income categories or particularly the, the living standard measurement categories, the, the so-called LSMs, that, that there is sort of particular views that are particular to, to, to some of these um, categories and one very often sees that, that those residing within the higher LSM categories very often do not see the, the realities as far as poverty and inequality is concerned on the ground. I mean, you ask a simple question like, where do you interact with people of other races? Do you do it at home? Do you do it at work? Do you do it at church? Um, mm. At a shopping centre? And for the vast majority of South Africans across all racial groups, frankly, it happens in the shopping centre or at least in public spaces. Yes, we see where interaction takes place or where integration really takes place are in those public spaces, integrated spaces that have been opened up by legislation in the post-apartheid era, but where we don't see any contact or, or very little contact taking place is within the more intimate spaces um, such as homes, such as religious gatherings, communal gatherings, and, and so on. So much more integration in, in the public spaces, uh, typically also um, amongst people that are employed and finding themselves within, within the higher LSM categories. And I think that, that also just, you know, is another sort of reason why one should, should focus on the creation of a much more inclusive economy, a much broader middle class as well, is because this is where the, the potential exists for, for reconciliation and, and social cohesion to, to take place. I think one, one also has to add that increased levels of contact does not necessarily mean increased levels of, of reconciliation. What it does mean is that the, that the opportunity exists there, but as South Africans we also have to promote these, these deeper and sometimes much more difficult conversations that need to happen 
around reconciliation. Uh, and it's also people's perception of their own place in the world. For many white South Africans, they feel as if they're getting poorer. They might measure themselves, for example, on a global basis. But for many black South Africans, you ask them whether or not they are better off, worse off, or the same as they were in various time mm. frames. And particularly Indian South Africans, people of Asian origin, they suggest that they have never had it so good. Yeah, well, I, I think if one if one looks at the most recent studies on on, on poverty and income that has been done by the um, by Statistics South Africa, I mean, what what one sees, of course, is that that white households, the average income of white house, ho households, are much much higher yeah. than that of Indians, for example, coloreds or or black South Africans. But one sees. That, that these household sort of incomes, particularly for black South Africans, I think in the most recent um, household survey, um, which was done in 2011, the, the average income was something around 69,000 Rand. Now that 69,000 Rand is very low in comparison with, for example, the 357,000 of a white household, but it represents a much bigger increase, but from a lower base. So what one has seen is that there has been proportional increases in the in the incomes of of, of black South Africans and also of, of Indian households that outstrip that, for example, of, of white incomes. Does that affect people's optimism, though? Because if you are seeing an exponential growth in your living standard, in your income, you're more likely to be optimistic than somebody who is maybe seeing their growth in income tapering off or even declining. Most certainly, most certainly that, that impacts on, on our perspectives, on, on progress and also our hope for, for the future and, and that of our country. And I think in, in many ways it is that optimism that has also carried us forward um, in, in recent years, despite the, the circumstances that a majority of South Africans have lived in, is that that, that hope has been created because people have seen an increase in, in their household incomes, but also in terms of their access to things like clean water, sanitation, and, and so forth. And, and that created some momentum um, in terms of, of, of the hope that people had for the future. I think the big question right now is where we are experiencing a period of, of, uh, of economic distress and, and where we also look forward next week to the budget to see what measures government will put in place to to arrest some of the circumstances that make people fear. I think this, this also holds relevance right now because the question is when, when this progress sl slows down, it may also have a, an impact on our political culture. Uh, and it's, uh, look, I mean, if you were the president and you were giving a state of the nation address, a real state of the nation based on people's perceptions of themselves and their place in the world, what would your state of the nation sound like? I promise not to interject and throw things. I, I think just looking back at the, at the president's speech last week, I, I think his, his task was really to comfort, um, given the circumstances that, that people find themselves in. And if one looks at, at the, the results of our survey that was conducted in, in August and September last year, I think the, the mood is, is pretty dim right now. So the, the president's task was really to to comfort people and also to address difficult or different constituencies both on the left and the right of the economic spectrum, also to assure them that government is doing what, whatever it can. So I, I think he did what, what he had to do. Uh, how much weight his assurance of last week carries um, is another question uh, given also the, the political circumstances that he as a person finds himself in at the moment. I think the, the, the real message that, that we're waiting for is, is next week and, and that message will be much more directed at South African citizens in terms of the sacrifices that, that need to be made and the pain that we might have to endure in, in the coming year or years to come. But if I was asking you as President Jan Hofmeyer, based on the research you've done for a real state of the nation, what, how would you summarize it in, in a minute? Well, I, I would summarize it by, by saying that, that the country has made significant gains over the past 22 years. And, and I think the, the de developmental statistics are there also to, to prove it. It has created a lot of, of forward momentum over, over this period. but. 
um, as, as far as the nation is concerned, as far as its cohesion is concerned, I think what we are experiencing right now is a lot of pressure, a lot of strain on, on that, that cohesion. And that, that calls for careful management of our society at the moment, careful management of the tensions that exist. But I think as, as um, a, a government, one should also make sure that, that whatever policies we implement during the next, uh, during the short to medium term, should be as inclusive as possible. Now, when you look at the results and you compare the results over the last 12 or 13 years since you started this research, are we in the middle of the range in terms of uh, of South Africans' perceptions of themselves over that period? Are we at the bottom, or are we improving? Well, it, it really fluctuates, and, and what we've seen uh, since we've started with the survey uh, in 2003 is that a lot of public sentiment also follows the economic climate at, at, a, at the particular juncture. We've seen very high levels of optimism, particularly between 2003 to up to 2006, and then there, there was a, a, a decline, one started to see sort of a gradual decline, and, and the trajectory of that decline started to, to become more steep around to 2008 and then 2009 when the country entered um, recession territory. It has picked up again um, in 2011, 2012, but we, we've seen declines again in the recent years. Are we back at 2008 levels or worse? I think we, we are now more or less in terms of confidence that exists in government, institutions, etc. We are around where we were around 2009. Jan Hofmap, thank you very much uh, for a minute or so, the president, but uh, his day job is head of the policy unit, uh, policy and analysis unit, of course, at the Institute for Justice and Reconciliation. Fascinating insights into the attitudes that South Africans have, not only towards themselves, but to others as well. Thank you for watching. More looking at what is happening in the world of money next time on The Moneymakers. Till next time, bye-bye.